Greetings, everybody. This is going to be part two of America and Bible Prophecy. We left off at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. So let's continue with uh, Sally's Bible study and a little bit of my commentary. Leaders of our country, the USA, right? Leaders of our country um, stating this publicly in defiance of God will bring punishment upon our nation, besides all of our other iniquities. Yet God still waits for us to repent, with his hand still stretched out, and many of Ephraim will come to repentance eventually. My note, uh, that's what judgment's for. Um, we're not under wrath, but we are under judgment. There's a difference, okay? Um, you break the speed limit in a school zone, you get a speeding ticket, go to court, pay it, that's judgment. You kill somebody and you are executed, that's wrath. There's a difference. There's a difference between being spanked and being destroyed. All right, so. Oh, uh, let's see. In Zechariah chapter 10, verse 7, we read, Those of Ephraim will be like a mighty man, and their heart shall restore as if with wine. Yes, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart will rejoice in the Lord. My note, there's always a remnant. And I'd like to think that uh, those, uh, not that I'm a leader, don't ever follow me. I, I tell you what, don't ever follow me unless I'm leading you to Jesus. I'm just a guide. I just try to be a guide, a teacher. Don't ever follow me, but uh, I, think, I think there's some wonderful people that uh, comment on my channel. All right, so Sally writes, before this happens, our country has so many times to, uh, so many things to repent for, such as an inconceivable number of government sanctioned, taxpayer fun function funded, child sacrifices, abortions under the guise of freedom of choice, support of not only the homosexual lifestyle, um, Bob's note, the Bible calls it sodomy, right? But also, Homosexual marriage, these things are not only condoned, but encouraged, and most recently our government has turned, um, she writes, against Israel through the United Nations. Um, oh, wait a minute. I thought I explained to her. Uh, my note, I think America and England and Europe is Israel. But she's thinking, I guess she's thinking the Middle East, the, that little government in the middle country in the Middle East. Uh, the United Nations created the Israeli state in 1947 or 1948. So, uh, you know, when the, uh, when you get uh, people pretending to be against them, it's, it's all a game. You know, it's just like Trump. When uh, he was uh, trying to get elected, he was like, oh, I'm going to put you know, investigate Hillary and put her in prison. Well, take a look at my videos, the real Donald Trump, where he uh, calls the Clintons good people, uh, pictures of him at a wedding with them, where they're all smiling and patting each other on the back, and and then he uh, honors them at a banquet, asks everybody to rise and please clap for him, you know. So, it's always... Uh, it's called hypocrisy, so. All right, Sally's thing continued. End of Bob's notes. And there's so much more, any and all of which are reason for God to curse our country. Does the U.S. and possibly other Western countries represent Babylon the Great? Spiritual adultery is a, an apostate state, a harlot. Um, my note. Take a look at my uh, Bible study on Mystery Babylon. The Bible point paints end time Jerusalem as Mystery Babylon. 
So, um, hey, let's face it. None of us has it all figured out. Um, not to fault Sally. Um, I haven't seen her in over 20 years. And uh, I kind of discipled them back when I was a baby believer. Um, but um, her stuff, she, it's pretty good. Now, let me tell you something. Um, the apostles asked Jesus when he was going to return for the second coming and set up the kingdom of Israel. And he said he didn't know. I'm paraphrasing. He didn't know. He said, neither do I know or neither the angels in heaven, but only the Father. Only God the Father knows when he's coming. And let me tell you something. If Jesus doesn't know something, uh, who am I or any of us, right? So, all right. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7. I'm sorry, Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great horror that sitteth upon many waters. And when you look up uh, the waters, um, on which the horse sits, it's people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. You know, that's the waters, right? Um, verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit on a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Um, is there seven continents? And ten horns would uh, represent uh, kings, right? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. There's a verse in the Bible that says that Babylon was a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. Uh, just remember, now, this is Bob talking. Um, Jerusalem, when it went apostate, uh, the Lord had Babylon carry Jerusalem into captivity for 70 years. Read the book of Daniel, read Jeremiah. So, uh, Babylon was a golden cup. Matter of fact, uh, Daniel chapter 4 was written by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Think about that. <laughs> Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Wow. All right, verse 5. And upon her forehead, Mystery Babylon, right? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, uh, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, people will tell you New York City is Mystery Babylon. Well, when did uh, New York City kill the blood, you know, was responsible for the blood or the death of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus? It wasn't. Um, in the days of the apostles, Rome wasn't responsible for killing Jesus and the apostles. No, 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 no. Read the crucifixion. Um, Pilate tried to release Jesus three times, and yet they'll tell you that he killed Jesus. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, the chief priests were responsible, and they weren't Catholic priests, okay? All right, so. All right, so Sally writes um, that uh, the people of the earth under mystery of Babylon, they're seduced into committing Spiritual adultery of Babylon, she made them drunk with power, wealth, false worship, and pride. Um, this last passage refers to the fallen church. The following uh, passages reveal how, fall we, how far we have fallen. Please turn to Romans chapter 1. Oh boy. All right, Romans 1 verse uh, 21. Well, she says 21, but I'm going to start in 20. 
uh, verse 20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So much for evolution, right? Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, people, Bob's note here. Um, you know, people look at a, uh, a jet at an airport, and you're going to tell me that came about over millions and millions of years? Really? You know? And the human body is far more complex than a, a jet. Far more. You know, it's it's self rep. Uh, well, it's replic. Uh, it's replicating. And if you don't believe it, uh, look at a couple that got married and had children. Uh, it's self healing when you're young, anyways. And um, you know, it's got memory. And uh, you know, what can I tell you? It's you know. Uh, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Sounds like evolutionary sinus with PhDs, if you ask me. But that's Bob's note. 23. Um, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Uh, Bob's note, when it says that they, God gave them up, I mean God gives up on them. He gave up on them. Oh, you want to be a sodomite? No problem. You know, when your heart's not tender towards God and you don't have conviction anymore, no shame, no conviction, God has seared your conscience with a hot iron. You're done. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Bob's note here. Sodomite marriages, right? And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud. You ever seen a gay pride parade? Bob's note here. Oh yeah, proud. Boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding. You see, Bob's note here, they have no understanding of God. Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. See, these people, they know, they know the judgment of God. They know it. All right, um, in 1 Corinthians 6.18, she writes, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual morality sins against his own body. When God gives them up to uncleanness and gives them over to a, she writes, a debased mind and vile passions, sexual immorality, this is a punishment in itself. 
All right, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days, are we in the last days, Bob's note? I don't know. People have been saying that for, you know, almost 2,000 years, but every day is a day closer, right? So, all right, uh, Sally references 2 Timothy 3, 1, chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of the sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, we read... Uh, verse 9 and 10, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. Now, Bob's note here, that's the thing, people. You know, you can't know that you're um, in violation of the law unless you know the law. Okay? And if you're in violation of the law, then there's a penalty. You know, if there's no penalty for a law, it, then it's just a suggestion. You know, you commit murder, uh, Bible says you should be put to death, but only in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So, you know, if you steal, you had to re repay uh, four times. So if you stole 100 bucks, you had to repay it $400, $400. If you didn't have the money or you couldn't repay it, well, then you were sold into slavery. And if you absolutely refused to be sold into slavery to repay the 400 bucks, you were to be executed. Uh, people say, oh, well, God's law is too harsh. It doesn't work. Well, it's better let murderers walk free so they can kill over and over and over again from our judicial system. What can I tell you, right? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for, whor for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men-stealers, uh, men-stealers, that's uh, kidnappers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. All right, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you got... The United Methodist Church doing sodomite weddings, well, is that sound doctrine? I think not, but that's my uh, opinion, uh, Bob's note. All right, um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, she writes, uh, she quotes 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. So that's going to be, this is Bob's note, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats uh, is going to be two things that are doctrines of devils. So, forbidding to marry and commanding 
to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So evidently, um, in the latter times, forbidding to marry and commanding vegetarianism is going to be a doctrine of devil. But that's my take on it. All right, she writes, Do we represent the church? Are we the younger brother? If we're Ephraim, we may be Jacob. If we're Jacob, we may be Isaac. If we're Isaac, we may be Abel. And if we're Abel, we must be willing to serve God. All right, this is the end of part two of uh, the United States and Prophecy. Oh, one more thing. Just remember, people, in Daniel 20, Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, tw uh, verse 21, it says, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth the kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. So, did God have a hand in creating America? God removes kings and he sets up kings. So, all right, well, this is the end of part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.